I'm a Namaste guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Friday afternoon evening here in Denver, Colorado. It's about 5.30 p.m., just in time for dinner for everybody. But because I eat dinner at weird times, I'm not having dinner, and I thought I'd jump on and do a stream for you guys. So I want to share with you a book that I've been excited to read. Avani Atma Namaste since July of 2019 is when it first came into my awareness. And I was like, is it out? Is it out? Is it out? And then it finally came out. Uh, I was at the annual Arhata Yoga Retreat in San Diego, California. And guess what? Didn't buy my copy early enough and they completely sold out of all the copies. So I made a special request to a friend that was in New Jersey, attending the East Coast Annual Arhatic Yoga Retreat, Ken Atmanamaste, and I said, you have to reserve a copy of this book for me, please. And they said, we only have 150 copies of the book. There's 500 people coming to the event. But she said, don't worry, I got your back. So she was able to buy me the book. I picked it up from her the next day, and I got my own signed copy Super, super grateful. So the book I want to promote to you guys today, it's called Spiritual Truths, Spiritual Truths by Dr. Glenn Mendoza. And the little, uh, the little explore, discover, and understand the deeper meaning of sacred wisdom. Just finished this book. As you guys know, I do book recommendations here and there. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I make a book recommendation based on me actually reading it and applying that book before I recommend it to other people. There was only one exception to a book that I recommended that hadn't completely read, and I'm actually trying to remember what that book was. Drawing a complete blank, to be honest with you. Stephen, I'm a namaste. So the beautiful thing about this book, it was written by one of my very close mentors over the past 16 years, Dr. Glenn Mendoza, who is a very well-known neonatologist in New York and New Jersey. He's been a doctor for over 40 years. He's been a pranic healer for over 25 years. And he basically has spoon-fed me the spiritual teachings of our teacher, who you see on the back wall, Grandmaster Cho Koksui. And he wrote two different books. One is Better Person Mindset, which I actually did a stream on that about a year ago. Prashant, I'm a namaste. And he just finished writing this book a few months ago, got my copy on it, a copy of it this past weekend, just finished reading it today. And as I was reading it, not a yabba namaste, as I was reading this book, I had a an aha that transformed me. I don't know if I should share it right now in this book or, or in this live stream because we're all at different levels of understanding. We're at different levels of truth, right? We're at different levels of development. So my insight and aha and sharing it with you may not be your insight or aha, but I did want to share um, one passage from this book, Ruben Atma Namaste, that what's beautiful about this book called Spiritual Truths by Dr. Glenn Mendoza is the my two favorite parts of the book or chapters of the book is one, making the distinction between um, between happiness, joy, and bliss. So those distinctions of happiness, joy, and bliss was, or pleasure, happiness, joy, and bliss, making the distinctions between those four energies is one chapter. Osman, Amen, Namaste, and was fascinating. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then the other chapter was basically about the five uh, major world religions and how truth is universal. And even though different religions and different spiritual practices call different things by different names, they're all pointing to the same truth. That was what's beautiful about this book. So I highly recommend picking up your copy. You can grab it on Amazon.com. You can also go to uh, PronicHealingUSA.com to pick up a copy as well. You can email the center directly in Lynnhurst, Massachusetts and say, hey, send me out a copy. I'd love to read this book. And you know what's interesting about this? Look, see this book? Right? You see the book. You see the cover. Look how thick this book is. So you can extract huge spiritual nuggets from this book that can transform the quality of your life 
in about one sitting versus, versus a great, 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 great spiritual teacher, Sri Aurobindo, who wrote The Yoga of Synthesis in the early 1970s, an amazing book that is actually a foundational teachings to what we practice in pranic healing and arhatic yoga. A lot of what we do in arhatic yoga is based on this book and based on this teacher, right? But look, do you notice something? <laughs> it's, it's a much thicker book. And not only is this book much thicker, but it's much more dense. It's a very challenging book to read. I bought this book um, in 2014 and I've read maybe maybe one-seventh of this book because you don't just like read a book like this cover to cover and go, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. No problem. Right? This is a book that you, you read you read maybe a passage, you maybe read a th three or four pages, and then you sit with it, you meditate with it, you go, what is he trying to say? And the person I am now, in 2020, is much different than the person I was in 2014 when I originally picked up this book. But look, you can't read this book and understand this book in one sitting. On the other hand, Dr. Glenn Mendoza's book, Spiritual Truths, you can pick this book up, read it cover to cover in one sitting and have a higher level of understanding of truth, of wisdom, of God and the relationship between us and God. Beautiful book. So there's one passage I want to read. I saved it. Denise, Atma Namaste. Are you going to be doing the meditation with the group later on tonight? I bet you are. You're in the same time zone. So there's something I want to read uh, from this book. So I already told you my two favorite chapters, the chapter on um, discussing pleasure, happiness, joy, and bliss. Loved it. Loved it. Especially the portion on bliss. Like I get all like goose bumpily. You bought the book. That a girl. Don't forget to read it. Don't forget to apply it. Don't forget to share it. And then the chapter on... Um, on the major religions, and rather than seeing the differences within the world's major religions, seeing the similarities of the world's major religions. So those are my two favorite chapters of the whole book. But I want to read this to you. Uh, this is from The Story of My God, the chapter on The Story of My God, which is about the major, how the major religions view God. First, India at that time believed in many gods. If the Lord Buddha addresses the concept of God, there would be numerous arguments and thousands of questions would arise. Second, it is possible in my humble opinion that subsequent disciples might have misinterpreted or might have extracted the Buddha's views and beliefs on God in his silence. Third, the Lord Buddha may have felt and fully expressed that the answer to the question of God was not relevant to the spiritual path. He wanted his devotees to remain focused upon nirvana without distractions. These reasons can explain why the Lord Buddha did not discuss the existence of Ishvara or God. So in Buddhism, God is not talked about. And the question is, why is not God talked about? Didn't the Lord Buddha believe in God? Didn't the Lord Buddha experience God? Didn't the Lord Buddha experience oneness with God, oneness with all? If so... Why didn't he talk about God, right? So he goes on with this part of the, this is the meat of what I want to share with you. A story was told where the Lord Buddha was asked by a person, what will happen after I die? What was, what was my form before birth? What is the source of all we see? Answer these questions and I will be your disciple. So basically it's some, it's some spiritual seeker going before the Lord Buddha and asking him these questions. And he says, if you can answer these questions, I will be your disciple. The Lord Buddha told him that there was once a man who had been wounded by a poison arrow. The family wanted to find a doctor to help him, but the man refused any aid. The mortally wounded man said that before any doctor tried to assist him, he wanted to know who attacked him, what was his caste, and where was he from. He wanted to know if the man was tall and strong, 
If he had light or dark skin, he wanted to know the kind of bow he used and whether the string was made of hemp, silk, or bamboo. He wondered if the, nar- if the arrow's feathers came from a vulture, peacock, or falcon, and whether the bow was curved or made of oleander. The man ended up dying before getting an answer to any of his questions. We overemphasize insignificant things that sink into us into a state of unnecessary concern and prevent us from enjoying the present. The Lord Buddha aptly said, Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. The story of the Lord Buddha's life is that of one man's spiritual journey to great enlightenment, great teachings, and a way of living that developed from it. He turned our attention away from gods and heaven to the heart and encouraged us to find solutions to life's problems. So what does that all mean? Why is that significant? And why am I sharing this part of the book with you? Because Dr. Glenn, he's on. I love it. So we have the author of the book that's on the stream right now. I love it. So in the sharing of that story, we spend so much time nitpicking looking at the trivialities of life, putting so much focus on the minutia that we miss the forest through the trees, right? So the Lord Buddha in this excerpt is saying, look, we could talk about God. We could talk about all the complexities and levels and layers and all the different deities and all of these things, right? But that is not going to get you any closer to experiencing God, So that's why he says, do your spiritual practice, and through the process of doing your spiritual practice, you will experience God, right? That's why we have conflict within religion, because we have different names for God, different practices to uh, uh, to arrive at God, so we see the differences. We're looking at the fingers instead of where the fingers are pointing. The fingers are pointing at truth. Right? The fingers are pointing at truth. The lower level of truth is we get caught looking at the fingers and going, the fingers are God. Instead of, well, is the unified field God? Is God God? Is Mother Gaia God? Is, um, is Nirvana God? So we get caught up with the terminology when we just have to realize, guys, All of these fingers, all of these words are pointing to the same reality. So what would you rather do? Would you rather sit down, be in the stillness, be in the silence, practice, and through your practice, you will know God versus cat up and state versus having debates on who and what God is. Nadia, I'm a namaste, Master Glenn, looking forward to this evening's meditation. Yes, Master Glenn is doing it. Evening Twin Hearts Meditation for the Coronavirus. So for those of you who are on the East Coast and that time works for you at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you go to pranichealingusa.com, pranichealingusa.com at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you can join in with the collective Twin Hearts Meditation to bless the fear, the anxiety, the anxiousness around the coronavirus because within Pranic Healing, We are part of the lineage of compassion and mercy. So us coming together as a group to bless and heal Mother Earth is our form of compassion, is doing the little part that we can, right? So highly recommend picking up this book. Prashant says, hold on guys, whoops. And the truth is realized by going inwards, experiencing oneness with oneself, letting go of delusion and becoming aware of oneness with infinite ocean of collective energy. Nailed it. Correct. Does that make sense? So highly recommend picking up this book. Again, it's a thinner book, but it contains priceless spiritual teachings. Priceless spiritual teachings. And for those of you who read this book from cover to cover, I will share with you the biggest nugget that I got out of this book. That literally... As I was reading it, as I was reading the book, I, ha- I had to like pause 
not for a couple seconds, but I paused for like five, 10 minutes to bask in the realization, the higher level spiritual truth that I experienced just by reading that passage. And that nugget alone will forever change my spiritual practice. That nugget alone will forever change my spiritual practice. So for those of you who read the book, buy the book, read the book cover to cover, let me know, let me see that you're holding the book, right? And a picture or something like that on Facebook. And then I will share with you that nugget that I got, that this nugget is not applicable just to me. It's applicable to anybody that is a fervent spiritual seeker. So I hope that helps. Um, I love promoting Master Glenn. I love promoting the Masters in Pranic Healing because they are embodiments of service to humanity, all of the Masters in Pranic Healing. And I'm honored to hang out with them in any way, shape, or form over the years. Let's plan book reading session. Oh, that's right. Avani keeps talking about a book reading or um, book study group. I keep forgetting that. We'll get to that. Just looking at the cover of the book, Feel the Crown Pumping. Indeed. Indeed. Shannon, I'm a namaste. You would, Shannon, you would love this book. I've been seeing certain posts that you've been doing online about Christianity. You would love this book. You would get a tremendous amount of value out of it. Paula, I'm a namaste. So hearing from you about the book itself, I feel oneness with the infinite ocean of light, amazing energy radiating from the physical book, the author of the book, and higher beings channeling through the book. Yes, absolutely. So um, that's basically what I want to jump on tonight to share with you guys. Uh, my excitement for Master Glenn's new book, my excitement for the realizations that I had reading this book cover to cover. It's basically a book you can read in two sittings. Now, does that mean you're going to master what is in this book in two sittings? Absolutely not. This is a lifetime, 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 lifetime practice and process, but it will definitely give you a greater ability to strengthen the connection of your You and your higher soul, and your higher soul with your divine spark, your divine spark, and ultimately with God. Because when you read something and you study something, you're practicing a form of yoga called jnana yoga, which is the yoga of understanding. And just because we say yoga, it doesn't mean it's it doesn't mean it's related only to India. Every religion, every spiritual practice has its form of jnana yoga. Again, Don't get caught with the words. Don't get caught with the language. Don't get caught with the fingers. Look at where the fingers are pointing. Look at where the fingers are pointing. It's actually very interesting because I was brought up in a Catholic household. My father went to Catholic school. My dad had his Bible. He had his rosaries and he would occasionally do them from time to time. He would occasionally do the Lord's Prayer from time to time. And I grew up hearing the word God a lot. So I didn't have negative connotations to the word God. But as I grew up and I matured on the spiritual path, I ran into person after person after person, meditators, yogis, Manny, Atma Namaste, my Colorado Springs brother, that you would mention the word God and they would, they would shut down, right? You mentioned the word God and they would go, oh, don't want to talk about it. But if you mentioned unified field, if you mentioned Mother Gaia, if you mentioned um, a certain deity or deva, they would open up, right? Because they were over-identified and hung up on the word, right? They were hung up on the word. So we have to transcend and evolve past that and go, okay, this person is saying God, this person is saying unified field, This person is saying Mother Gaia. This person is saying infinite intelligence. This person is saying essence. Is it possible that they're all pointing to the same thing? Right? So I realized like one of Master Cho Koksui's many, many gifts and brilliance was his ability to speak at the language and level of the people in front of him. So if people were comfortable with the word God, he would say God. If they were comfortable with another language or another word, he would build a bridge of communication for them to cross over, right? Because that's the skill of a great communicator. 
When somebody doesn't understand a message, it's the fault of the communicator because the communicator is the one who has the wisdom and their job is to step down the energy for the ordinary person for them to go, oh, that's what you mean, right? And then as the person goes, that's what you mean, it raises up their consciousness, it raises up their understanding and they can then experience higher level spiritual truths. Make sense? Right? So our job as communicators is to meet people where they're at. It's easy to talk over somebody's head. It's easy to use jargon. Think about this. If you were to visit your general care practitioner, your general physician who <clears throat> who does your annual checkups, and you said, how am I doing? And every word out of their mouth was medical jargon, and you didn't understand any of it, Whose fault would that be? Would that be the doctor's fault or would that be your fault for not having the medical training? It'd be the doctor's fault. The doctor's job as the expert is being able to step down the information to make it consumable and digestible for you as the lay person or the ordinary person. So whenever we do these live streams, <clears throat> my goal is to never talk over anybody's head with certain spiritual jargon because my goal is not to show you how much I know or how impressive I can speak. My goal is to help give you information that you can assimilate, digest, and transform your life with. That's the goal. Every single stream, this stream, the stream before this stream, and the stream after this stream, it's always to transform you, to bring you from where you are to where you want to be in a given area of your life. However, we have to do that. So I'm always thinking, what's a better way of saying that? What's a clear way of saying that? Am I talking over somebody's head? Am I saying something that's too fuzzy, that's not clear, that's, um, that's prideful, that's uh, you know, irritating, that's all of these things, right? The goal is to, is to create a space of receptivity and a bridge of communication so we can walk over the bridge together and we can evolve and transcend together. Does that make sense? Clear? So again, last promo for Master Glenn's book, Dr. Glenn Mendoza's book, Spiritual truths, explore, discover, and understand the deeper meaning of sacred wisdom. Of sacred wisdom. And as Grandmaster Cho Kuk Sui defines wisdom through the Lord's Prayer, starting at the crown, our Father, then to the forehead, who art in heaven, meaning the heavenly realm. This center in Kabbalah is known as Chokma, and Chokma means wisdom. And from wisdom comes all other things. So as you practice your spiritual life and as you understand higher spiritual truths, you develop greater wisdom. So you do things you think, say, and do things that keep you in alignment with your higher self and alignment with God and you stop doing things, you stop thinking things, you stop saying things, and you stop doing things that get you out of alignment with your higher soul and ultimately with God. So that's the power of having wisdom. So reading a book like this, even though it's a thin book, even though you can finish it in two sittings, it will give you greater wisdom than where you, where you are currently at, allowing you to move your life forward. Make sense? So Vani says, seems sold out, unavailable on Amazon in India. There you go. That's a good sign, right? It means people are buying the book and people are reading it and applying it and transforming their lives. Osman says, by chance, did, did you, Master Glenn, sign the book? Yes. So I was clever enough that I was right in the middle of one of his talks at the Center for Pranic Healing in Lyndhurst, New Jersey, and they were on a break. And I slid my copy in while he was talking <laughs> on the break. And I said, Master Glenn, will you please sign my book? Got him to sign my book. So both books that Master Glenn has written, Better Person Mindset and Spiritual Truths, I've gotten him to sign both copies. So super grateful for that. May the blessings continue to flow. Um, and that's it, guys. So uh, that being said, if I can assist you in your transformational process, <laughs> bingo, feeling it. If I can assist you in your transformational process, feel free to go to my website. It's my name, 
christianrlong.com. Sign up for a 30-minute consultation or um, if you know what you need healing on, sign up for a healing right there. It's synced up with my calendar and my phone. We see each other on FaceTime, on Skype, on Zoom, wherever, and we can transform your life um, in whatever area, physical health, emotional relationship health, uh, finances, spiritual illumination. Not saying I'm enlightened, not anywhere near a Lord Buddha, uh, a Lord Christ, a um, a Master Choa. I was thinking, I was watching a video today. Hmm, I wonder if I should share this or not. Mm, no, I won't share it right now. Not necessary. Maybe it may be a, t- a time for uh, another day. So, that being said, if I can assist you, go to ChristianRlong.com. If you know of somebody who is in need of healing, who is in need of transformation, who is inspired to become a better person, send them my website as well, ChristianRlong.com. And that's it, guys. So thank you very, very much for sharing your time, your energy, your comments with the group. Hopefully each and every person got additional value added. If you have further questions, feel free to message me. (laughs) Manny, you would not believe it. I have not experienced it firsthand because I haven't done the protocols, but there is a pranic healing protocol for hair growth. There is a pranic healing protocol for hair growth. I can do any of the protocols within pranic healing, but I have no experience doing that protocol. But people have done it. Uh, Which chakra? The basic chakra. The basic chakra at the tailbone deals with hair growth. Osman says, thank you so much for sharing. You, Christian R. Long, one of a kind. Atma Namaste. Uh, Thank you very much. All credit to Grandmaster Cho Kuksui. Good, good, good. Well, thank you guys very much. Get the book, pick it up on Amazon, or go to pranichealingusa.com, pick it up there. No matter how you do it, pick up the book, read the book, apply the book, transform your life. Advanced book, hair thinning protocol. Yes, there you go. See, Yubi, I'm going to say, see, with, (laughs) with Manny, it's not hair thinning protocol, it's no hair protocol. What do you do for the no hair protocol? You the best. You guys are so funny. Everyone's getting all jacked up and excited. Also, as a shout out to Master Glenn, please share. You might not do this with other videos, but please share this video on your personal Facebook page, your professional Facebook page, maybe even Twitter, LinkedIn. Get the word out about Master Glenn Mendoza's book, Dr. Glenn Mendoza's book, okay? Spiritual Truths. So please share this. Um, isn't it funny that the light from the outside is coming in here? So it was lighter during this beginning of the stream than it is now because the sun is gradually setting. Yay. So love you guys very, very much. May God and my teacher, Grandma Ch- Master Cho Kuksui, bless you in every single area of your life without exception, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, physically, financially, Properly and rapidly, now, 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 now. So be it. Mary, Atma Namaste. I don't see you on the live streams very much, but I always see you giving a little like, a little love, a little comment here and there. Good to have you on. Please re-watch this. Get value from it. Transform your life. And I look forward to connecting with you guys very, very soon. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful Friday, a beautiful weekend, and a beautiful life. Atma Namaste. Bye-bye.